Okay, so in this video, we're going to be solving the following problem in Python. We're given two lists. We're guaranteed that the two lists that we're given are sorted. And we want to calculate the intersection between A and B. So the intersection, if you recall, is the set of elements that are common to both arrays or both lists in this case. So for instance, the set three and seven would be the intersection between A and B. And that's easy enough to eyeball because these lists are quite small. So you can see that three is present in A, it's also present in B. Likewise, seven is present in A and seven is also present in B. So three and seven are the only two elements that are present in both A and B, so they're, therefore they're the intersection between A and B. So for instance, element two is only present in A, it's not in B, so that wouldn't be in the intersection. Element 31 is only present in B, it's not present in A, so that would not be in the intersection either. Okay, so before we solve this more, um, I guess in a more specific manner, since we know that A and B are sorted, I wanna step through very quickly a one line solution that makes use of sets to solve this problem in a more general way. So the first solution that we'll present will just be very quick, a very concise solution, it's only one line, and it's more general in the sense that it does not rely on the fact that A and B need to be sorted in order to work. But since A and B are sorted, we can take advantage of that fact and we can solve the problem a little bit more efficiently from a time complexity standpoint. So first, let me give you the more general solution, which relies on making use of Python set function. So all we really need to do, there's a built-in function in Python that allows us to calculate the intersection. So if you're not familiar, first of all, with the set function in Python, basically what that does is that operates on a list and it returns to you a set object that only has the unique elements in that list. So for instance, A here has two, three, three, five, seven, and 11. So there's duplicate entry of three, there's two entries of three. So the set of A would only be two, three, five, seven, and 11. It would get rid of that extra three. So for instance, if we print out set of A to the screen, we'll see that the set of the list A is only two, three, five, seven, and 11. So notice that extra three is not present. So we can also do the same thing for B as well, of course. So what we're gonna do is there's a built-in function in Python that we can run on a set. So that function is called dot intersection. And what you can do is you can say set a dot intersection, and then you can give it the other set on which you wish to perform the intersection. And then if you print the result out, you will get a set, and that set will be the intersection between sets A and B. So we'll go ahead and print that out to the screen just to verify that we get three and seven. So indeed we get three and seven, the set three and seven. You can tell by the curly braces. So again, that solution is fine. It will work in this case, of course, but it, is not the optimal way to solve it if you know that A and B are going to be sorted. So we're gonna step through a way in which you can solve this in a more um, specific way, knowing that they are sorted. So we're gonna write that logic in the intersect sorted array function. So the way in which this function is going to work is we're going to have two iterators, I and J. So I is going to iterate through the list A and J is going to iterate through the list B. And what we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not the elements at either of the indices are less, greater, or equal. And we'll basically figure out whether or not to add them to the set or to progress the iterator. So for instance, if we start off, let's just actually write this out as we go along. And then I think if we step through it step by step, it'll become clear how this works in general. So we'll have an iterator that focuses on I, on A, and then we'll have an iterator J that focuses on B. So we'll start them at the front of their respective lists. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to compare the elements at each of these indices. And we're going to process accordingly. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check, we're going to say, what is A of I? So that's two, A of J is three. And in this case, A of I is less than A of J. So two is less than three. So since we know these are in a sorted order, what we're going to do is we're just going to move I along. We know they're not equal, and we know that in order for us to get to a point here in A, where this might be equal to this element here at J, we need to move I along in the list. So we're going to increment I by one. So now I is pointing to this element here, this three, and J is stuck where it was in the beginning. So we make another comparison. We ask, is A of I and A of J, what is their relationship? So in this case, they're equal. So what we do now is we check, okay, well, is this the first three that we're actually encountering here? Because we don't necessarily want to store these elements into a list and then 
check whether or not that element is in the list every time because that's going to take linear time every time we check whether or not an element is present in a list. So we want to avoid that. So one way for us to check whether or not this is the first time we've encountered this element is we can check if this element that i is on here is equal to the one, the previous one that we just processed. Again, we can do that because we know these are sorted. So if this one here is indeed the first element, then the element before it will be different. So if a of i is not equal to a of i minus one, then we know this is the first occurrence of three. So what we can do is in that case, is we can say, okay, this is the first time we've seen a three. We can add it to our unique element list and then we can increment i, we can also increment j. So j also moves now. So now we get to a case where we have i and j being equal, but this isn't the first occurrence of three. In other words, we already know that we have this in our set, our, our intersection set. So what we do is we check, is a of i equal to a of i minus one? Oh, it is. So this is not the first time we've seen this element. So we're just going to move right along. So we're just going to increment i, we're also going to increment j. So now what we do is we ask, okay, is a of i equal to j, a of j? Well, in this case, a of i is less than it. So what we can do is since we know that these are sorted, we can say, okay, this is less, so we need to catch up to j. So let's move i right along. So now we see that these are equal. So we check whether or not this entry is equal to this entry down here. Remember a of i is equal to a of i minus one, it's not. So this must be the first occurrence that we've seen of seven. So we'll go ahead and add that to our list. So then what we do is we progress both i and both j. And then what we do here is we say, oh, okay, well now i is on 11, j is on 15, and i is less than 15, or i is looking at an element that's left in less than 15, it's looking at 11. So we try to increment i, but we notice that we, we're also checking whether or not this is less than the length of a. So in this case, we're at the end of the length of a. So we're like, well, we're done here. We can't possibly encounter anything more in b that would be also present in a, because again, these are sorted and we've reached the end of one of the two lists. So we're done here. So that's pretty much the uh, algorithm in a nutshell. There's one or two other tweaks that are going to be just an edge case or two, but that's generally what we're going to go ahead and code up. So let's get to actually coding that up. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove these indices there and let's get down to this function. So what we're gonna do is we're going to define our iterators. So i is equal to g zero, j is equal to zero. So i will be for a, j will be for b. And then what we'll do is we'll have an empty list that we'll define to be intersection. And these will store the proper intersections that we encounter as we encounter them in our loop. So let's go ahead and code up that loop. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say while i is less than the length of a, and j is less than the length of b. So again, we don't want to read beyond the bounds of the array. So the, the, this, these two checks are gonna make sure that we don't do that. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to have three different checks. We're gonna check if the entry i and j for a and b are equal, if they're strictly less than, or if they're strictly greater than. And then we're going to process accordingly. So if a of i is equal to b of j, what we're gonna do in that case is we're going to check if a of i is not equal to a of i minus one, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add that to our intersection because we haven't seen that before. So we're gonna say intersection.append a of i. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to increment our iterators i and j. So i plus equal one, and then j plus equal one. So again, this would be the case where we, let's say we're, we're here, let's say i is here and j is down here at the first element, we check whether or not this element here that i is on is equal, um, is, is not equal to the element down here. So it's not equal to two. So this is indeed the first occurrence that we've encountered of three. So we go ahead and this if statement gets triggered and we add that to our list and then we increment i and j. Okay, so now we have two other cases that we need to worry about. Else if a of i is strictly less than b of j. So again, this was the case when we had something like this, where we were, let's say I was, let's say I was here looking at this five, and then j was here looking at the seven. So in this case, what we wanted to do, since we know these are sorted, we wanted to have i catch up to j. So we moved i right along until we got to a point where this wasn't the case. So in this case, they happen to be equal after that increment. So in this case, where i of a of i is strictly less than b of j, 
we want to go ahead and move i up by one. And then we, we want to do the other thing if j has that property. So otherwise, we want to increment j by 1. So I'll just put a comment here. I'll just say this this is really an else statement for the opposite case when a of i is greater than b of j. So that, then that's when we want to increment j plus 1. And then what we'll do is re we'll return, after the loop, the intersection, which should return the elements that are unique to both sets. So there's one final thing that I want to point out over here in this if statement, and that is something that might be a bit of an edge case where we're checking if a of i is not equal to a of i minus 1. So that's all well and good, but if you check that, if you start off here at the front of the two lists, and you're checking if a of i is not equal to a of i minus 1, well, if you check if a of i, in that case 0, is not equal to a of i minus 1, which in this case would be negative 1, you're checking if the zeroth element of a is not equal to the last element of a. So that's, remember, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on, indexed from the back. So that's not quite what we want there. So we're going to have to put in an extra check here. So if i is equal to 0, or if this thing is true, then we'll, inter then we'll append the element, because that's a, a, an element that we haven't encountered yet. So just a minor bit of edge case, something that's uh, good to watch out for. So that's we'll put that in there, and that should fix that problem. So in this particular approach, we have an algorithm that will work in big O of n plus m times. So that's n is the size of the array A, and then m is the size of the array B, because we're going to be moving you know, i through A and j through B, and that's going to give us that runtime complexity. So let's go ahead and make sure that this outputs the proper uh, list in this case three and seven so this will be returned as a list not a set but it should consist of the correct numbers hopefully so let's go ahead and write that and then give it a run and see what we get so indeed we get the list which consists of the intersection of a and b which in this case is three and seven so that pretty much does it for this video as always the code for all these videos is put up on my GitHub account. You can find that in the description below. If you have any questions or comments or anything else, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.